Hey folks, it's Barry here. Welcome to my Virgin Kitchen. Now, first things first, I'm trying out a new microphone today. It's been quite echoey for a long, long time and I'm trying to do something about it. So playing around with a few microphones, let me know down below what you think. Uh, unless you miss the ambience of the Virgin Kitchen, it might sound all right. Today, we're tasting some more treats from around the world you guys have been sending me. It's the turn of Zimbabwe today. My friend Rob has sent me some treats. Uh, he's just come back from there. And I'm quite excited. In fact, I've already tried one from there. You might have missed the Mopani worm uh, taste test I did. Basically caterpillars. If you haven't seen it, check it out. But anyhow, there's some real cool stuff here. Uh, let's get on and Zimbabwe up, folks. All right. So the first thing I've got is a tin of chakalaka. Isn't that like a song? Boom, chakalaka laka. Uh, spicy tomato stew, usually used with meat or pasta. Kind of like a spicy equivalent to tin tomatoes. As you can see, I've already opened the tin. What I did to put it in a little dish, blast it in the microwave for a minute, and it's ready, nice and hot behind me. Let's have a taste. I've actually not had any breakfast, so I'm quite intrigued by what my breakfast uh, will become. But here we go. Uh, it's looking good. Very tomato colour. That is, must be a long shard of onion right there. Here we go. Ooh. <clears throat> oh, my goodness. Wow, that does have... Um, I noticed on the tin it did say the sign hot. I'd imagine they might do a slightly milder one. That's a nice uh, spank to kick off my breakfast. Really, not, actually kind of like having a curry. That's the closest thing I can put it to. Edible breakfast curry. Next up by Labelle's is uh, Marie. It's a packet of biscuits. Labelle's Marie biscuit is the equivalent of the English rich tea, which is quite similar to graham or animal crackers uh, in the USA. Uh, so yeah, if you named it Marie, maybe you've named it after like an ex-partner, like a nice sort of divorce settlement. Okay, you have the kids, you have biscuits named after you. Anyhow, uh, let's try them. That might calm down my fire breath right now. Alrighty, here we go. So, oh, I'm just gonna take half. That's fine for portion control right there. It snapped in half, looking very, very light. Here we go. Mm. I'm trying to be careful because I'm not sure how sensitive this microphone is to the chomping noises. I'll try and cut them out. But these are really good. Just like a rich tea biscuit. It's light and mild. I'm loving it. Perfect contrast to that spicy kicking off starty thing. Marie, I love you. Next up is something by Willard's called Corn Curls. Okay, so it's Corn Curls with all the K's like that. Kind of like the Kim Kardashian thing going on. Uh, but on there is a piece of corn who's very happy with himself as a man possibly corn curls could turn into like the new workout oh i'm doing my corn curls uh, so yeah i love 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 corn uh, these are described as my father describes them as salty cardboard although i love them as a kid hopefully i'm gonna love them too let's try curling some corn that sounded wrong oh nice loving it foil packed as well uh, let's take one out aha uh -huh does kind of look like a puffy finger. Can you see that? Uh, what's it's kind of cheesy crisps here in the UK, very similar to that without the cheese, maybe just purely corn. Let's curl one in. Oh, I can see actually at first it was like, yes, nice crunch, but then the salt kicked in and I can see why that does resemble salty cardboard. Um, curling them like a workout might be a better option, but you know, they would get you through the day. They're not too bad. Salty cardboard it is. This one is called Charon's Milko. Uh, as I'm seeing right now, quite normal, uh, unintimidating packaging right now. Loving the Zimbabwe feel right here. Apparently this is like a chunky uh, milky bar, which is one of my favorite chocolate bars. So let's see, shall we? I wasn't expecting that, it's, it's white. It's white, okay, that's fine. I was, you know, a milky bar is uh, milk chocolate here in the UK. There is some sort of like black thing in the middle of it there. So let's investigate and find out what that is. Hopefully it's not a worm or mold or, yeah. Yeah, so there's the bit with the black bit in it. I don't know what that was. That was very hard. That wasn't anything like a milky bar at all. I hope I haven't picked up the wrong one in the description. Possibly I have. I don't think that black thing was supposed to be in there. This tastes like soap. I've just read the description again and it said milky bar, not milky way. A milky bar was a white chocolate, but it does still taste of soap. Let's go back to the savory now. This is Willard's Chompkins Tomato Sauce Flavor Crisps. That's the only description I have. Uh, there is a crazy cool looking monster on the front that looks a little bit like uh, the guy from Sugar Puffs. Hopefully you get that in your country, but he is a little bit more ramped up with a space helmet on. Just dishing out these tomato flavor crisps. The tastiest, crispiest snack in a pack. Let's find out. Oh, it's even got the Sugar Puff Man doing his story on the back. Hey, 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 what a day. I feel fit and strong. And what is this? A caper craft, a safety gear. What's all this for? I fear. No, no, I know. That sounds like a really bad rap song. Um, Adventure continued on the fruit chutney pack. They do fruit chutney flavor of these? Amazing. 
Let's get the tomato going now. Ooh, kind of like a slightly mild of our boom chaka laka 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 smell going on right there. Aha, I see they are nice and thin uh, potato chips, kind of like Lay's and Walker's here in the UK. You know, just thin sliced. Most uh, crisps that I've tried from around the world tend to be a bit more extravagant and out there, all different shapes. A bit like the corn curls, really, but these, I know I am. There's a little shade of pink on there, 50 shades of crisp, uh, if you will. It's going to be tomato flavoured, as we know, but it's not seeming intimidating. I'm liking it. Mmm. Oh, that is very, very nice. There is a little nice sort of sweetness to it. A nice little chinky spank. Chompkins, Chompkins, imagine if that was your name at school. Chompkins, sit down right now and eat your crisps. They are delicious and sweet and mild. A little bit nicer than shaka laka laka laka, unless you want a spicy kick. Next up is something called biscuit. Uh, I was thinking, you know, you open the wrapper and it is just a biscuit. That would be amazing marketing. Uh, but this is milk chocolate with crisp biscuit wafer. Now we don't normally call a wafer biscuit here in the UK, but possibly this is a new type of wafer. Oh, crazy. Let's find out. Oh, here we go. Nice, thin, chocolate rectangular thing. Just gonna bite straight into it. Mm -hmm. It's not too bad. I've almost got a little teeny vibe of coconut in there. Possibly not even in there whatsoever, but the wafer is just like the standard wafer we get here. Uh, so there's no real biscuit in there, marketing fail, but I'm loving it. Apart from there is a mild cardboard twang working its way in. Could be the aftertaste of the corn things, but I've tasted better. Next up by Baxton are some apricots. Uh, Rob says, vaguely peachy flavored sugar, if my memory serves me well. So flavored candy, mallow treats, they uh, do look like a little bit like bottoms, actually. Uh, apricots, I couldn't see any apricot flavoring mentioned on the ingredients behind. There's lots of codes like E330 and E211 and lots of other stuff like that. So I'm sure combining them together does create the flavor of apricots. Uh, they do look pretty cool though. Yes, they do look like bottoms. So uh, bottoms up, shall we? Oh, crikey, you do get a very mild fruity scent right there, but one thing that is coming out more is like that real chemical scent. There are some serious flavorings in here, and I don't know if they're all listed on the back. So anyhow, uh, let's get one out. Can you see that sort of contrast, the bummy thing? There we go. Um, it's very firm, actually, really firm, like a rock. I was expecting it to be a bit softer. Let's have a taste. So uh, let's bite into the bottom. Wouldn't be the first time I said that, right, Mrs. Barry? Uh, anyhow. Oh. I kind of made a pirate face then. It wasn't as hard as it looked. Mmm. Mmm. Wow. Oh my goodness, that is like a sugar overload. I feel like I should be Superman right now, flying, circling around my kitchen like a fly, trying to escape. Uh, there's like crispy shell around the outside, quite a thick girth to it. But in the middle, no, that's still tough. But when it was in the mouth, with a bit of moisturizer, the fluidness of my saliva, moisturizing it, I don't know where I'm going now. My saliva softened it up and it became very soft, but it's very, very sugary. The one thing I'm gonna say about these is if you've got a friend who's feeling a little bit low, needs a bit of a sugar kick, give them a packet of these apricots, and I think with the sugar in there, you should be feeling a little bit better, a bit perkier. So this is uh, by Uni Snacks. It's called Salted Maputi, and at first I thought it was coral from the sea. Amazing, uh, but it's actually uh, popcorn. Maputi, uh, yes, traditional popped corn. See this video made by a mate of mine, which I'll check out later. I don't have access to videos right now. I'm in eating mode, uh, but Salted Maputi. Maputi sounds like what you might call your uh, your other half. She's Maputi, yeah. Maput maybe not. Uh, so yes, salted popcorn. Excited to try this. Quite natural packaging, loving it. Oh my goodness, lovely scent to it. Almost like it is just freshly popped. You know when you're in the cinema, you're like, I'm not hungry, we'll have some food later, and then you smell the popcorn, you're like, <laughs> like that, you sort of kind of fly. I hope it's not just me. Anyhow, let's uh, get in here. I'm gonna go for like a nice little handful of this. Kind of like flatter popcorn as well. Here we go. Hmm. I don't know really know what to say about that. that. I could not taste salt on that at all. That tasted more like cardboard uh, than the corn did earlier. Again, it's all sort of corn, they're all part of the same Zimbabwe loving family, but I'm not quite feeling it. It was just little polystyrene balls. In fact, it was like that. You know when you get like a parcel and you get those polystyrene things and you just want to rummage around with? It was like eating that. Uh. 
All right, so next up by Cabri is a chomp. Uh, now, apparently with wafer, I'm sure the wafer is new, says Rob. Uh, yes, on the front there's Charlie and Charlotte, which either like are dinosaurs or hippos. They're either uh, in a relationship or there's some brother-sister incest going on. We're not gonna go into that, but delicious wafer biscuit and caramel covered in chocolate flavored coating. A chomp in the UK when I was younger and still is actually now a very popular budget bar, just chocolate and caramel. So uh, the addition, of wafer, the addition of wafer could ramp this up. I'm excited. So let's not forget, it does say Cadbury's on the wrapper as well. Um, will it taste like British Cadbury's chocolate or more localized Zimbabwe version of Cadbury's chocolate? Here we go. Oh. By the Zimbabwean nose of a sniffer dog, that is incredibly good. Uh, nothing like the chomp we get here in the UK. The chocolate wasn't like Cadbury's, I'm afraid, but um, it's, it's nice. It, it's good. It's wafer and caramel around that chocolate. Lovely little crunch to it and possibly the best thing I've had so far. I'm going to have some more chocolate right now because I can. Uh, slam is up next, which does look like uh, it's been slammed in packaging. It's kind of like mangled. Uh, slam, a budget Mars bar, or at least it used to be. It could be something completely different. It could be a block of cheese now. Let's find out. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> that is proper Joe mangled right there. Can you see the caramel on there? Oh, wow. I'm excited. Oh, that's going to like brr, motivate it. No, I'm just going to eat it sensibly. Yes. Mm, mm. That is really, really good. The only thing I'm going to say, it's a teeny bit drier than a normal Mars bar. It could be because it's got swished or slammed uh, in transport. The, like the caramel has oozed out the side, so it's mainly more sort of slabby, the firmer bit of chocolate in the middle. Teeny bit drier and powdery than what I'm used to. Not so much milk content in there. It does seem like that, but very, very nice. I'm going to store that in my pocket if I had one right now. I'm loving it. All right, so next up by Willards. I kind of want to say that like a pirate. Willards. Uh, chicken flings. Um, it kind of sounds like what a chicken would do if they're having an affair. I don't think chickens tend to sort of have affairs or stuff like that. But uh, anyhow, chicken flings. Chicken flavoured corn snack. There's a very excited chicken on the front saying, taste the zing in my flings. So many things we can say to that. So many zings or flings we can say. Flings. Unbelievable. We'll just skim over that. Uh, there's, in fact, on the back, there's an address and phone number for any customer services, any complaints. So I might actually give this number a call, 2634-620-410, if I do have uh, a complaint. So here we go. Let's uh, let's try chicken flings. Uh, what's the description here? Uh, more salty cardboard. Amazing. Here we go. All righty. Ooh, that does smell like chicken, actually. Not great chicken, but, you know, chicken nonetheless. Kind of like old school chicken nuggets. You know, when it used to be... 2% chicken, they've got a lot better now, right? But um, yes, yeah, it didn't used to be so good, right? But they are just like our corn curls. They are little, like, little old lady's fingers. Oh, hello, young man, let me touch you. Uh, yes, but with a scent of chicken, I'm quite excited. They might have just sprinkled chicken stock cube on it, but here we go. Like a moustache, hello, how are you doing? Yeah, I've got to agree with Rob there. That does just taste of salty cardboard. At uh, the minute it hit my tongue, it kind of dissolved straight away and became one with my tongue, it could still be on there, uh, but the taste is just pure salt. The smell is incredible. If it tasted like what it smelled like, it would be amazing, but it just kind of melted away. And uh, I'm a little disappointed by that. I might have to ring the number on the back. Um, yeah. Meh. Meh. Sorry. Next up by Pascal are some chocolate caramels. And just like a successful Zimbabwe businessman, they're rich and creamy. Uh, Rob says, these always remind me of my grandmother who loved these, even though they used to pull her dentures out, which is an amazing vision. Uh, rich caramel infused with smooth chocolate made by Pascal, which reminds me of a French student that we once had. We had some French students come to our house and I told them, little side story here, it was a tradition to put vinegar on your rice pudding. I was a little bit mischievous back then, he did it. Pascal didn't speak to me for the rest of his time in the UK. So Pascal, if you are watching, I am je suis désolé. I am sorry. Uh, let's open these up. All right, so they're individually wrapped and I'm just gonna go twist it like that. Take the one out. Well, here we go. They do look like pretty nasty medieval looking toffees right there. If they had toffees in the medieval times, I'm sure they did when they were defending their castles. They were like, let's break now, guys. Let's have some toffees. Here we go. Mmm. I don't know why my fists are doing like that. It's making me do that. The chocolate is inside of the caramel. So that intimidating medieval looking entrance way was, met, was, met, was met with a chocolate pathway to heaven. Almost an R. Kelly moment, almost, almost. 
Last up is a lunch bar, which Rob says is just like a lion bar. I am so excited for this. Um, made by Cadbury's as well. Cadbury's chocolate on top, optional. Hopefully it'll be nice. Let's have a try. Oh wow, yes. It is looking like a lion bar. It's got that nipply bumpy bit on it. Ram packed with stuff. <sighs> I'm excited. Oh my goodness, we had to cut the music then. R. Kelly moment, biscuits, wafer, caramel, peanuts, chocolate. Not Cadbury's chocolate, UK version, but that was fine. So, so good. An R. Kelly moment on that bar, the lunch bar. So, so good. Zimbabwe treat tasting video is all done, guys. If you missed the Mopani worm video, uh, check that out. That was a little bonus uh, that I did last week for this one. If you would like to send me treats from around the world from your country, go to myvirginkitchen.com and use the contact form and we'll get in touch and communicate and stuff and check out the other taste testing videos I've done from all around the world. We've done loads so far. So have fun getting stuck into that playlist and um, that lunch bar was proper arcade-tastic. Cheers, Rob, for sending that over, and I'll see you next time.